Hello everyone and welcome back to One Man Stream. In today's episode, we're going to show you how to create this graphic right here. I call it my starting five graphic. I use it for basketball, but with a little bit of tweaking, you could pretty much, you know, make it uh, usable for any sport. So we're going to show you how we do this step by step. We're going to start with uh, the construction of the graphic in GT Title Designer. We'll show you how to get the data into this graphic uh, using the list widget function that we've talked about on previous episodes and show you how to add data into this graphic uh, from an Excel spreadsheet using a function called VLOOKUP. We're going to have that and so much more for you on today's episode of One Man Stream. So to get started, we're going to go to uh, GT Title Designer, and uh, this is our palette. We're going to start off with a fresh palette, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create this in three layers. Uh, the first layer is going to be the player image, the team logo, and our main rectangle is going to be uh, made uh, with a gradient. And then layer two is going to be the team name, which is going to be on the left-hand side. And then our third rectangle is going to be the player bio rectangle. And uh, that is going to be at the bottom. And that'll have the player's name and the player's number. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to make the first layer visible. And you can see we have three elements here. Uh, the first element is the main rectangle. And as I said, that is a gradient. So in order to do this, you would go up to gradient and click on uh, slide down here to where it says gradient and then click on that. When you open it up, you only have two stops here. So what I had to do is I had to add four stops. So I just clicked add stop four times and it brought these guys in. And then what I did is I set the two on the ends a darker color. I'm using three shades of gray on this gradient. And the two endpoints are the darker one. So uh, that's this shade right here. And then I go to the one on the far right click on the color button again you can see that the darker shade is highlighted and then I go on the two uh, next to the ones we just created and you can see it's the next shade of gray and it's that way on both of them and then you can see the two in the middle are the lightest shade of gray on my color palette And that's how we made the main rectangle. So our next element was the team logo. And how did we do that? Well, we went up to image. And I just clicked on, I found an, uh, a logo that I wanted to go with. It was actually the first one that popped up that I thought would be usable. And I click open. And as usual, it comes in pretty large. So I scaled it down to something that I could use. And then what I did is I put it in position and I changed the opacity of it to make it lighter. So I, I go up to effects and then under opacity, I bring it down to about 21 and you can see that it's starting to get lighter. And so I put it at 21 and that's how we did that. You'll notice if I move it over here, it's about the same the same opacity as that one so that's how we did the uh, logo the team logo image the next piece was the uh, player image I did that the same way I went up and I hit picture chose this one here scaled it down and I didn't uh, mess with the opacity on this one I just kind of put it where I wanted it and you can always uh, by clicking on the header here for image one, then you can use your arrows on your keyboard and you can see uh, the image is going up and down. And I'm just doing that by using uh, the arrows on the keyboard. So that's how I did the player image. So our next part is layer two, and I'll go ahead and show you what layer two looks like. And that is this rectangle over here and then the team name. So we did it the same way. Uh, what I did is I just came up here and I created a rectangle. And I know the size of these rectangles. And I'll go ahead and give it to you 217 by 50. So I'll go under Format. I'll click on 217 Width and 50 Height. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to effects and we're going to skew it. And then after we have it uh, the way that we want it, I'm going to hold the control button down on the keyboard. And with my mouse, I'm going to click on these arrows that converge in the center of the circle. And I'm going to rotate it. And then I'm going to go to format and I'm going to make sure the Z rotation is, is exactly 90, to, 90 degrees. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to change the color, the fill color to black. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is the team name and we're going to make a rectangle again. And we're going to center the uh, text. Well, first we're going to make it impact and we're going to make it extra bold. And then we're going to center it right and left, up and down. And then we're going to go over here and click this button and we're going to click shrink. And that way, if we have a very long team name, we'll still be able to confine it uh, inside of this text box here. And we're going to change the fill color to white. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did last time. I'm going to hold down the control key. I'm going to come to where these arrows converge and I'm going to rotate it. And then I'm going to go check the format and make sure the Z rotation is exactly 90. And then I'm going to bring this over and put it right here. So then what I would do is I would make sure that I make these guys a layer because we want to do this in three layers. So what I would do is I would highlight uh, rectangle one and then I would highlight text box one and the names that I gave those were team name. You can see that right here and team name rectangle. I have them highlighted and then I go click on the home button and create a group layer and that puts everything in one layer and it's going to allow me to move it over here into position. And then you can use the fine arrows once again to get it exactly where you want it. So that's how we did the second group of elements. Third group of elements is layer three. And these guys are entitled player bio rectangle, which is this main black rectangle here. Player number, which is the number right here. And player name, which is right here. And I'm not going to go through all the steps. I'm, I don't want to beat you guys over the head with this. But for the number 10, I had to go up and use this to create a text block. And then I used the impact font. I centered it in the middle, left and uh, in the middle, up and down and left and right. And then that's how we did this. And on the player name, I did the same thing. I went up and created a text box again using the same font impact. I notched the size down just a little bit. On the number, I used 36, but on the name, I used 28. And then make sure you use the shrink function here so that longer names are going to fit within that text box. After I did that, I went and highlighted the names again for those three elements. And I went back to home. Oops. I went back to home and I created a group layer. Now I'm going to show you the animation that I put in here and then I'll show you how we do the animation step by step. This is the animation and I want the main part to come in first and then I want the other elements to come in with just a little bit of a delay. So how did we do that? Well, let's go to layer one. We're going, going to go under animations and what I did is I used reveal and there's no delay on this. But I sped up the duration a little bit. I made it a half a second. I think the default is one second. And I made it a half a second. I want it to reveal itself from the right. So let's click on it and see what happens. Well, that's everything. But you can see that it reveals itself from the right. Okay, let's go and look at the second, the second element, layer two. Let's go to animation. I used reveal again, and since we rotated this 90 degrees, we're not coming at ha we're not having it come in uh, from the left hand side. We're having it come in from the bottom. So let's take a look at this one. 
you can see that it starts from the bottom and makes its way up. And how did we do that? Well, let's go to animations and take a look. Layer two animation. And we did delay it. We delayed it a half a second and we cut down the duration to a half a second. So the third part is the is layer three and it's the player name and that information and let's look under animation and what we did is we didn't delay that quite as long we delayed that a quarter of a second and the duration is a half a second like the other ones so when you put it all together you get that so how do we go from one to four well that's the easy part you'll come here and you'll click on layer one and then you'll right click copy right click again and paste and then it makes it a new layer see where the layer one changed to layer five and then you bring that over you position it where you want it and then you go to the next element which is this guy right here layer two right click copy right click paste it changed layer two to layer six you slide it over and then with the arrows, you do your fine adjustment. And that's how we did the second part. Layer three is the player bio rectangle and that information. So we're going to do the same thing on layer three. We're going to right click and copy and right click and paste. Changes it to layer seven. And we're going to slide layer seven over where we want it. And then we're going to use the arrows again to do the fine adjustment. And I'm doing this kind of quickly just to uh, speed up the video process. And then we're going to do the exact same thing three more times. And you saw how quick and easy that was. And don't be concerned that uh, this last rectangle is falling out of the, uh, um, the area that you want to keep everything confined within so that it's visible on your screen. Because you'll be able to deal with that after you bring it into your vMix production. You'll be able to uh, mess with the positioning and the scaling and you'll be able to put it exactly where you want it. So that's how we did that. So sometimes after you do all this copy and pasting, the... Um, animations are a little bit off so let's take a look at the animations to see what that looks like now and that looks pretty good i'm going to show you how to bring in the data uh, for this graphic right here and basically what we're going to do is we're going to be using the list widget in vmix utc uh, to bring in all this player information so what we need to do first is go to our vmix utc layout and this is what it looks like and there's not a whole lot that we need to do uh, this first button i made here is just to bring in the starting five graphic and i'll click on it and it'll bring that in along the bottom and i'll take it back out and i'll show you what i did here it was very simple uh, this is just uh, one of the button widgets and I use the overlay input X command, and that allows me to use it as a toggle. And then the input that we mapped this to was the basketball starting five graphic that we've talked so much about. And we're bringing it in on overlay channel three. So when we click it, it's going to bring it in. And we'll click it again, and it takes it out. On each one of the player profiles, we have the team logo and this is how we brought the team logo in i used a list widget and you can see right here it is a list widget and what i did is i brought in the graphic five times the basketball starting five graphic i brought it in by clicking the plus button i clicked it five times and then i brought this piece of information in uh, from the available inputs and it's a uh, basketball starting five and then what i did is uh, on each one of those uh, graphics, let's move this out of the way. On each one of these, there is a team name. And the first one just says team name. And then this one says team name one, team name two, 
team name three, team name four. And this happens when we did the copy and paste. Each time it would just add a, uh, it would increase the digit by one uh, for each one of the elements. So this was the team name element. So what I did is I brought in team name, team name one, team name two, team name three, team name four. And then I just came down here to under items and you can create a quite a, an extensive list, but I just hit the plus button three times and I brought in three team names, uh, Louisville, Duke, and Gonzaga, and just click OK. Well, when you come up here now with this drop down menu, uh, right now it is on Gonzaga. If you click Louisville, you'll notice they all changed to Louisville. And if you click Duke, boo, it all changes to Duke. So let's get it back to uh, where it was initially at Gonzaga. And so that's how we uh, populate the team name portion uh, of the starting five graphic. Now this next part is the team logo. We did that the same way using a list widget once again. And we brought in the same uh, input five times uh, like it did on the team name. Uh, each time we copied and pasted it, it added a digit to it. So we have the original team logo and then team logo one, team logo two, team logo three, team logo four. And we have it set right now to uh, more. And if I click here, it'll change to the uh, yellow jacket uh, logo that we have. And if we click it one more time, it'll change to this logo here. Now the last part uh, that we did uh, has to do with the players. So we have uh, five, the starting five, and we have five players. And this is how we did that. Under mapping, we brought in the basketball starting five graphic. And then we have three pieces of information that we're mapping it to. The player number, the player name, and the player image. And what, we're, what we did as we're using uh, the bar delimited uh, data function in the list widget, and what it's doing is it's coming to this first piece of information, which is player number, and it's going to put in the number on this uh, line of information. And then the next piece of information it comes to is player name. So it's going to come to the second bit of information and put that information in under player name. And then it's going to go on to the next piece of information, which is player image. And here's the player image. And it's going to put that under player image. Now, the one thing you have to remember, and I've harped on this quite a bit, uh, when you're bringing in these images, when you're uh, copying the path, it's also going to bring in the quotation marks. And you have to go back, at, go back in and take those quotation marks out before that image is going to appear in your graphic. So make sure you do that. Go back in and take those quotation marks out. So if we wanted to change this one up, we could do it. We can uh, say we want to change it to Susan Jones. We click on Susan Jones and you can see it takes that first player and it changes it to Susan Jones. But let's go ahead and change that back to what we originally had it at as John Smith. And we'll click it and it does it as John Smith. Now, the reason it is doing this and it allows us to do this is with the bar, delimit uh, bar delimited data uh, function, we have to make sure that we have the table. Uh, we have to check this tick box here as a table. If not, what it will do is it will come to this first piece of information and it's going to put that in under number. It's going to put it in under name and it's going to put it in under image. And that is certainly not what we want. Uh, we have to do it as table, uh, so it'll go to the next piece of data in the table to put it into the next available area. And once again, the three areas were player number, player name, and player image. So let's go ahead and bring the graphic out, and we'll bring the graphic back in one more time. Uh, you can see the animation, and you can see how that information comes in. I'm going to show you how to use an Excel spreadsheet and a function called VLOOKUP in order to bring this data into this graphic. To start off with, I'm going to talk a little bit about VLOOKUP. And I have some information uh, right here. And if you look VLOOKUP 
uh, up. If you do a Google search, you're going to find a bajillion different uh, tutorials and explanations of VLOOKUP. I put a little note here for myself. Don't make it harder than it is uh, because with VLOOKUP, you need four different arguments. And the first argument is it's our search term input. Argument two is the range uh, that we're looking into for that data. Argument three is within that range uh, of data. It's broken up into rows. And so the first row is always going to be one. So this would be row one. This would be row two. This would be row three. And this would be row four because our data range that we're going to search through is going to be this information right here. So our data range is going to start here, which is H, follow it over two, and it's going to go to this cell right here, and we're going to follow that. It's K6. So our range of data is going to be H2 to K6, and, and you'll see that later. And just remember that with VLOOKUP, it always looks to the right. It's kind of the same way that you read. It's going to look left to right. So for this first one here, for Jones, what it's going to do is it's going to start looking through these vertical columns like this, as, as, as implied by VLOOKUP, and it's going to come to our search entry, our search term input, and it's going to come to Jones. And then it's going to start looking over uh, by rows. So this is row one, row two, row three, and row four. So row two is going to be full name. So that's going to be over here where it's going to say starting player. Row three is number. And that's going to be right here. And then row four is going to be the uh, player image graphic. And that's going to be right here. So you may think, well, we're, we're, we're just duplicating our work from one side to the other. Well, we're really not. Uh, in order to use uh, data sources, we're going to have to map it uh, to the individual um, data points that we want to bring into the graphic. So just imagine if we had about 30 more uh, rows of information here. Each time that we use this graphic, we would have to go back in and, and, and um, map these individual fields. But when we're using VLOOKUP, we're going to bring that information into a set number of fields, and it's going to be the same each time. And so it's going to make it much easier for us uh, to map this graphic. So just imagine, I, I just only have um, six uh, pieces of information right here just to make it simple. But just imagine if it went all the way down the page. Um, we're we're going to be able to sort through that, bring out the five players that we want along with their accompanying information, and we're going to be able to use that in our graphics. So we're going to show you how to do that. We're going to do our first search here, and I'm going to just give you an example of how we did that, and then I'm going to show you the rest of, of the spreadsheet. Um, so we're going to start right here, and we're going to put an equal sign in. And then you also see up here in the function bar, it shows an equal sign. And then we're going to start typing the function that we're going to use, VLOOKUP. And you can see it comes in. It says VLOOKUP. And we're going to push, uh, and we're going to put a parentheses in here. Okay, so let's go to our first argument. This is the data that we're looking for, our search term input. And our first, uh, where our search term input is going to be, it's going to be in this cell right here. And it's going to be the uh, last name. Uh, of the player. So I'm going to go ahead and click on here and you can see how it adds it into our VLOOKUP formula. Then we're going to hit comma and then the next piece of information is our range. And as we talked about earlier, we know what our range is. It's H2 through K10. I'll put another comma. And then the next, oops, comma. And then the next piece of data is our third argument and within that range what column contains the info we seek well here's our range right here it uh, highlighted it in pink and remember it it looks left to right uh, just like you would be reading so this is column one this is column two so column two is going to bring us back the full name and that's what we're looking for here so we're going to go ahead and put a two in here and then we're going to put another comma. And then the last piece of information is whether we want uh, an exact match 
or not. And we really don't need an exact match in this case because we really don't want it to be case sensitive. So we're going to put false here and then we're going to hit enter. We can come down here and under example what we're going to do is we're going to put in, this is where we're searching for, uh, as you can see right here I highlighted the top part in red and this is the information that we're inputting and then these other pieces of information is what our search is bringing back. So let's go ahead and put the name sample in here and see what happens. It brings back the first name, Joe Sample. So what it did, what VLOOKUP did, is it came up here and vertically started looking for our search term, which was sample, uh, within the range that we indicated. And then it went to the second column, which is right here, and it pulled out the full name and put it here, which is exactly what we wanted. This first column is starting player name. So now we're going to go here to where the number is, and we're going to go equals once more and then go up here under our function line and start topi uh, typing in VLOOKUP and then our parentheses and our first argument is where do we want that information to go and it's going to be right here again so we're going to click there and then the next part if you remember it's our range our range is H2 through K10 and then another comma and now we want to get the number column and remember it reads from right to left. So this is column one, column two. Our number column is going to be column three. So we're going to put a three in here. And again, we don't want an exact match. So we're going to put false and close our parentheses and click enter. And again, it goes, it searches through, it finds sample, and then it goes to the third column and it brings up 99, which is the number that we have for our player Joe Sample. So the last piece of information is the player image. So we're going to start off the same way. We're going to hit equal and then go up here under our function bar and type in VLOOKUP again. Parentheses. Where's that information? Uh, where are we going to input that information as our search term? Well that goes right here. We're going to click that cell C29 put a comma in. Now we're going to go to our uh, range H2 through K10 and now another comma and then we're going to go to our column to find that bit of information. Well now we're looking for the image. So this is column 1, column 2, column 3. Our image is in column 4. So let's go ahead and put a 4 there. And again, we just, you're going to get an approximate match, not an exact match. So we're going to put false, close our parentheses, and hit equal. And it does bring in that bit of information right there. So once again, with VLOOKUP, it's going to go, to, uh, go through vertically looking for the data we told it to, to search for. In this case, it's sample. And then it's going to go with, uh, look through the range that we gave it, which is this whole bit of information right here. And then it's going to search for the column where we want that specific bit of information, column one, column two, column three, column four. And uh, the last piece of information is whether you want it to be an exact or a close match. And uh, like I said, we're not, we're not wanting an exact match, so we're putting false as that last argument, and it's bringing this up. If you click on it, it's gonna show our VLOOKUP for this, um, our term, uh, that we're searching for again is the uh, last name of the player and if you click right here that is uh, C2 so that's where the information uh, we're inputting the information then it has our range H2 to K6 I just made it a little bit smaller for up here the column uh, for the name is column 2 remember this is column 1 column 2 and then the last thing is true or false for an exact match so that, I mean, that's how that's done. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, like I said, there's a thousand different tutorials for VLOOKUP if this isn't, if I didn't explain it well enough. But uh, for what we're doing, uh, for our situation here, if you remember this information here and try not to make it harder than it is, uh, it'll, it'll really work for you. So the next part is uh, we have this information and we have, well, let me just go through this and I'll show you uh, how this will change our uh, our graphic. So I'm going to change some of these names up. Right now we have it as Jones, Score, Swish, Smith, and Clutch.
going to change these up a little bit. Let's go ahead and make this first one score. And then the second one swish. And then the third one smith. And then this one clutch. And then the last one jones. And this is actually uh, from my OneDrive in the cloud, so it's going to take it a minute before all these are going to change. So right I'll just hold here with you until those changes take place. And there you go. So now you see where it's Score, Swish, Smith, Clutch, and Jones, which is the exact same thing that we have here. First off, I'm going to have to show you how to bring in the spreadsheet. So I, I hit the hamburger menu here and I went under data sources. And then I added it. So what I did is I clicked right here, Excel, comma separated value. And then I went and I searched for my spreadsheet. So I hit browse. I know it's on my OneDrive. I clicked OneDrive. And I know it's under my desktop. So I'm going to scroll down. And it's One Man Stream, Episode 13 of Excel Sheet. So I'm going to click on that and click Open. Click OK. And you can see it brought in that information from the spreadsheet. I did uh, tweak a couple of the settings. Well, let's do this. I'm going to use the first row. This is what it looks like when it first comes in. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to click this box here, use first row as column names. And then I'm also going to convert the rows to, co uh, to columns. So I'm going to click OK. And you can see now we're just going to have one long row. But what it does is it brings in starting player one, player name one, number one, graphic one. And it's going to break it up like that for each player. So then we're going to have starting player two. And then player two name, number two, graphic image player two, and then the other information. And it does that for each individual player, and it makes it easier to find your information uh, when you're doing the mapping. And I'm going to right click, click on the title editor, and now we're back to where, where we were a moment ago. And I'm going to show you how you do the first player name. So I'm going to come down here to player name. And let, no, no, let's do the player number first. Player number, data source. You can see our Excel spreadsheet. We only, uh, we only have one uh, spreadsheet or uh, on this uh, particular spreadsheet. We only have one table. So it's just sheet one. And then this is going to have all the columns. And what we're looking for is player number. When you change it to columns, it's going to have that first bit of information as one, the second bit of information is two, the third bit as three, the fourth bit is four, the fifth bit is five. So it's going to be a little, a little clumsy going from the way we had the graphics set up to the mapping part of it just because of how the graph, uh, the data is brought in. But what we're looking for is number one. And here's number one right here. So all I did was select number one and click OK. And, it, and uh, you can see where it brings in uh, the number associated with the data that we just mapped it to. So then we're going to go to player name. And then data source again. This information is going to stay the same, but you're going to have to uh, select it each time the first time you set it up. Excel, uh, comma separated value, sheet one starting player so let's go ahead and click this so we're looking for the first thing we did or the first bit of information we did was number one but this is starting player one so we'll click on starting player one and that bit of information is brought in so then you would go to the next part which would be uh, player one number well this is where it, where it gets a little complicated because what we're actually going to be looking for is player number two, the way the data is brought in. So this information again, it's going to be the same Excel comma separated value sheet one, 
from our drop down menu we're going to be looking for number two and that's what's highlighted right there and you can see where the information is brought in then we're going to go to player name and again the way the data is brought in this is actually going to be player two we want starting player two starting player two and it brings in Sally Swish which is what we were needing and that's all you have to do uh, when you do the mapping on this um, it just takes a little bit of time but once you set the mapping mapping up it is set up forever once you have that uh, information set up or you have it mapped to your graphic uh, all you have to do is go back to your spreadsheet uh, each time and then what you can do is just put in the new information for the new team and then uh, the VLOOKUP functions you put in there, they're going to remain the same. Uh, the only thing that you may have to remember to do is uh, change your range. If you put a whole bunch of information in there, uh, you're increasing the, the uh, data that you're putting into your spreadsheet. Uh, you're going to have to go back into those uh, VLOOKUPs that you set up and you're going to have to adjust the range. But uh, that is pretty easy, pretty straightforward. So I hope I was able to uh, explain this well enough for you. Uh, VLOOKUP is something that I use quite a bit in the spreadsheets that I do. It takes a little bit of time, like I said at the beginning, to set it up. But once you have it set up, it's there forever. And it's going to be quite the, sim, uh, the time saver for you down the road. I hope you found this uh, tutorial series helpful. If you like it, please give us a thumbs up. And make sure to su subscribe so that you'll be alerted when new videos are posted. Thank you.